Hi, my name's Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. <laughs> About five years ago, I did a list of my top five favorite alien movies and a lot's changed since then. I can do way better than that. So today, you see the title. We're gonna talk about my top 20 alien films. Obviously, we are skewing this towards horror. So unfortunately, films like Men in Black, E.T., Space Jam aren't included on this list. I've been thinking about doing this video for a while, but with Nope coming out, it just inspired me to get back to my alien roots because this is really one of my favorite themes or subgenres of horror. I find aliens more scary than any home invasion film. So I'm very eager to see what your favorite alien horror movies are as well in the comments. Let me know if there's any that aren't on this list that you absolutely love. I know there will be one that's not my favorite. <laughs> Should I say it? No, you can guess that's not on this list. It's a film I've talked trash about before and got in trouble for, so I'm not gonna talk about it now. But before we even get started, I'm gonna fire off some bonus films that did not make the list. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which is more in vain of like an adventure kind of alien film, kind of like E.T., although E.T. is quite terrifying when you're a child. Not because of the alien, more because of the men in the hazmat suits. I found that really terrifying. <laughs> I was all for E.T. Uh, but Close Encounters of the Third Kind has what we call a positive alien interaction. So it's more of an adventure in a positive way, not so horror skewed. Another film that just doesn't quite make this list, but I really wanted it to, is Arrival. Absolutely amazing, jaw-dropping, epic film, but didn't quite fit the horror standards of this list, but I love it, absolutely love it, and highly, highly recommend it if you have not seen it. And then we have Dark Skies and Phoenix Forgotten, which are horror movies, but they didn't make my top 20, but if you are a horror fan, totally recommend checking them out. As you know, I'm a certified astronaut and an Aquarius, so there's no one better to give you a list of the top 20 alien horror films. <laughs> Let's go. In no particular order, we start with The Faculty. This is a 90s favorite if you've ever needed some anti-education propaganda. Hold tight because you'll be ready to drop out ASAP after viewing this one. And the cast is also stellar. Clea Duvall, Josh Hartnett, Selma Hayek, Usher, and Elijah Wood, just to name a few. The film follows a group of teens that witness a horrific accident resulting in death. But soon after, the so-called victim acts like nothing ever happened. Putting the pieces together, they realize this is part of a bigger conspiracy. 2014 indie horror Honeymoon often gets forgotten, but this creepy, twisted, romantic tale is well worth a watch. The drama fantasy horror is about a newlywed couple whose honeymoon in a lakeside home turns into terror. When Paul wakes up to find his new wife wandering disoriented in the middle of nowhere. Now there's a concerning shift in her behavior, and that's just the start. One of my favorite crossovers of all time, Clown and aliens. Killer Clowns from Outer Space needs no introduction. It's exactly what it says it is. A bizarre, light-hearted horror that makes the meanest of killer entities look sweet. The film follows a group of friends that must fight back when a circus tent lands in their small town and aliens that look like clowns invade their town, sucking the life out of the residents. Everything in this film is a pleasure to watch. It's a cutesy horror that spares no expenses with its set design. Slick UK sci-fi comedy attack the block centers around a group of youths residing in South London that will do anything to defend their block when the unthinkable invades. I love the tagline for this one, inner city versus outer space. The idea for this film came about when the director writer thought about what would happen if signs took place in South London. There is a sequel in the works for this one, although the deadline was earlier this year. So let me know if you hear anything about Attack the Block 2. You can't have an alien list without fire in the sky. Although connected to the true account of Travis Walton, the film was dramatically changed, adding fictionalized characters and sequences inspired by the dreams from the director. The film centers around an Arizona logger, Travis, who mysteriously disappears after an encounter with a UFO. His co-workers witness this event and while Travis is declared missing, the loggers are accused of murder. Although this film takes many creative liberties, there's a rumor going around that there will be a remake of this film, one that stays closer to the real account of Travis. One of the more lighthearted entries on this list is Grabbers, a fun adventure comedy horror about blood-sucking aliens who attack an island off the coast of Ireland. Now the locals must turn to their favorite vice to survive, beer. The film teams a 
classic detective mystery story with a lot of senseless laughs. Almost Shaun of the Dead style, so if you enjoy that kind of vibe, check out Grabbers. Under the Skin was one of my first experiences with A24 and set the bar high for me. The slow moving, almost surrealist drama horror mystery follows Scarlett Johansson as the female, a mysterious entity that begins to stalk lonely men who wander the streets of Scotland at night. The film has a unique feel to it. It could be the unsettling atmosphere or the fact that a lot of the men who are lured by the main character were not informed that they were in a film until after their scene. The film took almost 10 years to be made with the script being rewritten several times. Brad Pitt was at one point attached to it. It is a strange trance that is bound to get under your skin. 2020 drama horror Sputnik is the story of a lone survivor of a spaceship incident who is held in an isolated compound until he can be evaluated. Although he believes he is fine, he soon comes to the realization that he may have brought something back with him. This alien film shows the full alien reveal, which is a unique structure. In fact, the being itself was based on the way a kimono dragon moves. So if you're into an alien flick that doubles as an interesting creature feature, this is the one. Invasion of the Body Snatchers is a staple when we talk about alien behavior. This of course is the remake from the 70s, but I find this one to be much more chilling than the original. The film has many iconic moments and Donald Sutherland gives a spine tingling performance. The film takes place in San Francisco where two department health workers begin to suspect the people around them are changing, becoming the shell of what they used to be. As their investigation continues, they uncover a threat that not only affects their town, but the entire human race. I actually have a tattoo inspired by the next film I'm gonna talk about but it's on my foot, so you're gonna have to pay to see that. Drama horror sci-fi Dreamcatcher is based on the novel of the same name by Stephen King. The film stars Morgan Freeman, Thomas Jane, Damian Lewis and Jason Lee. It does have a typical King setup with childhood friends reuniting on an annual camping trip, recounting the memories and coming of age stories, all that cliche stuff until they discover a disorientated lost man who is harboring something evil. The movie has a great reveal and of course it is a powerful story of friendship. There's a lot more than what meets the eye and I don't wanna give anything away. Let's just say it has a very original take on the theme of a Aliens. Annihilation is a deep adventure drama sci-fi horror that counteracts its incredible aesthetic with a solemn gloomy tone. The movie directed by Alex Garland is based on a book. The film stars Natalie Portman, Oscar Isaac, Tessa Thompson, Gina Rodriguez and Jennifer Jason Lee. In Annihilation we follow a biologist, anthropologist, psychologist, surveyor and a linguist that must travel for an expedition to an environmental disaster zone. But in this zone, the laws of nature do not apply and what they find is otherworldly. It's a strange, alluring film that has a lot to unpack. On the polar opposite of the spectrum, I give you Slither, James Gunn's comedy sci-fi horror that is bound to make your skin crawl. The movie follows the dramatic consequences of a meteorite landing in a small town in South Carolina. Inside, a parasitic organism looking for a host. The strange little suckers then proceed to take over the town, turning the residents into mutants. The movie is pure horror comedy, but it has some epic transformation scenes that are bound to make you laugh and want to throw up at the same time. Pretty impressive. The fourth kind is a bit cheesy and it does take the viewer for a ride with its opening claiming to be based on facts, which is kind of bullshit. Set in Nome, Alaska, a town that has a record number of sightings, the film follows a psychologist who works with hypnosis to get to the root of her patient's issues, but in doing so, exposes patterns in their stories that lead to the skies. The found footage is intended to terrify audiences regardless of the cost. And you know what? It does work. I have to say this film is really scary, but they have some pretty cheap techniques in doing so. Like I said, they have an opening where they claim that it's a real story and the actors are actually out of character. 
explaining that. And then they do these side-by-side -side shots with a split screen showing the real footage along with the movie footage and how similar they are. And it's pretty effective. I mean, the rawness of the film is what makes it believable and really gets you in the zone. But the film is quite controversial because it angered local families who have people missing in Nome. And I can see why, especially given the documentary kind of style of the film. Of course, with most creature features and alien movies, sometimes not knowing the origin adds to the mystery. But A Quiet Place director John Krasinski confirmed in an interview that the monsters from A Quiet Place are indeed from another planet. The idea comes from a predator being introduced to an environment that's not equipped to handle it. The two Quiet Place films follow a family living in a post-apocalyptic world where aliens who hunt by sound have taken over. Now a family must work together when the creatures find their home. They have now announced the title of the third film in the series, which is a prequel. It's called a Quiet Place Day One, so it's bound to have answers, or I hope so, answers to where these alien beings came from. Based on the Stephen King novel, The Mist is a horror sci-fi thriller that follows a group of people trapped in a supermarket fighting for their lives against unknown bloodthirsty creatures. And before you jump down my throat, this, like the last one, is technically an alien film. During the movie, it is revealed by a soldier that the scientists here are working on the Arrowhead project, which may have caused the mist and the aliens to attack Earth. There's also a prelogue scene that was cut from the script that explains the experiment opened up a portal to another dimension where the creatures came through to Earth. So another dimension or space and time, these are aliens. If we go by the definition of a hypothetical or fictional being from another world. Although the director decided to go with the more ambiguous nature of the film and cut this scene completely. This film is terrifying, but it's often referred to because of its disturbing ending, which is known as one of the most brutal endings in cinematic history. If you haven't seen the film, I promise you it will ruin your day, your week, your month, your year. It's that powerful and grim. I've done a whole video on Alien ranking all of the films and this entry counts for the entire franchise. But of course, we've got to go with the first film. The original Alien from 1979 follows Ripley, a member of the crew on a commercial spacecraft that encounter an unknown transmission distress call, bringing back something strange on board. Now they must fight against a threat that they don't understand. Alien was so far ahead of its time it became an instant classic and the fear of the crew on board has not aged a day. The film that is as captivating as ever does what I love. It shows an alien that are actually alien looking. They look strange and unexpected. Even if they did use shreds of condoms for the tendons in the alien's jaw and some lube for that beautiful moist look. I had to say moist, I'm sorry. Did you think I would do an alien list without the thing? Just so I don't repeat myself, I thought I'd stick to one version, John Carpenter's. I was actually lucky enough to see this recently in the cinema. This was my first time seeing it on the big screen as intended. The, the film follows a research team in Antarctica who are hunted by a strange being with the ability to take on the form of its victims. Based on the science fiction novella Who Goes There, the movie explores the horror of paranoia in an isolated location. Jordan Peele's latest layered horror, Nope, stars Daniel Kaluuya and Kiki Palmer as brother and sister OJ and Emerald, who run a family business as horse stunt trainers. But their lives change when a horrific accident causes them to look to the sky for answers. I don't want to talk too much about this film because it's just come out and I'm not going to give any spoilers, but this film has layers and the second time I watched it, it was even better. But this is in the nature of Jordan Peele. You just have to delve in really deep. This film was actually inspired by Jaws, but unlike the ocean, there's no escaping the sky. And you've probably noticed in this list that there's not a lot of modern alien films. I don't know why. So I was very excited to see this modern take on aliens and I'm hungry for more. Okay, imagine being someone who was not scared by the birthday party footage in Signs. How was your life? Are you thriving? <laughs> That would change my life. That's like a whole different person. Even watching the film now, the CGI is a little bit outdated, but the sentiment remains the same. Written and directed by the king of twists, M. Night Shyamalan, the film has a star-studded cast, including friend of the channel, Rory Culkin. The movie follows a preacher who has lost God after a horrific accident haunts his family. Living with his children and brother in a farmhouse, 
things take a turn for the supernatural when crop circles begin to appear in his fields. As the stories start appearing on TV, they realize this could really be happening. What's impressive about signs is that they show so much of these creatures, yet they're still able to hold the tension. And the way these things cry really mess with my 12 year old brain. We're up to number 20, and this is actually my favorite alien film of all time. And it's a film a lot of people don't like. And probably a film a lot of people have not seen. It's called Communion. Communion is a highly underrated film and one that sticks with me even to today. The film is technically a biography, drama, horror, as it's based on a first person account book. The movie starring Christopher Walken follows a man who experiences unexplainable occurrences when at a holiday home in the woods with his family. And his life spirals out of control when he tries to uncover the truth truth, losing his sanity along the way. Look, this film isn't a lot of people's cup of tea, but for me, the creatures themselves in this film are so alien-like. The way they interact and move gives me the chills, and the spiral into insanity portrayed by Walken is very convincing. I like the idea that Christopher really explored the role as a third party and really questioned the intentions of his character. The author who he plays, Whitley Stryber, was really concerned by the way that he was being portrayed by Christopher Walken. Walken, he thought he was coming off a little bit crazy. And when he told Christopher Walken this, Christopher Walken replied with, well, if the shoe fits. I actually have the book. Wait a second. It's a newer copy, but if anyone finds like a cool like 80s version of this, like original copy, please let me know. I will buy it from you. Um, yeah, one of my favorite stories, even if it's true or not, I don't know. But the insanity mixed with the alien encounter and the way it all comes together, I love this film and it's not highly rated by any means. A lot of people tell me it doesn't hold up, but there's just something about it that feels so original and strange and strange in a way that it would actually be if aliens were involved in the production process. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's my 20 top alien films. I'm sure you can tell what kind of alien films I like from this, but leave yours down below and let me know if you guessed the one that I didn't include. People will probably say it anyway because I didn't mention it. But thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me today. If you do like my videos, it really helps if you give it a thumbs up and if you subscribe, if you want to share with a friend, that also is great. I do have a Patreon if you want to support me and tiers start at $2 a month and you get bonus videos every single week, more personal videos. Other than that, I'll see you on TikTok or Instagram or in a couple more days when I have another horrific video planned. Bye friends.